Hello everyone, it's Alan here from Dane and Blades. So in my last film I made the three bullet pocket pouch. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is a five bullet belt pouch. So a couple of things different, well obviously flap over the top, gonna have a belt loop and I've also for these ones I've added a Sam Brown to them but I could just as easily add a a snap to them, just a, a normal sort of press stud. But I just thought I'd try something a little bit different and just put the Sam Brown on. So, there we go, that's what they look like. This is how I made it. So that's all the leather cut. So one piece for the uh, belt loop. What I've got to do is put some holes in the top of it so I can stitch it onto the main body, which is this section. Uh, this will also have the um, holes cut into, well, use a pricking iron to punch the holes in for stitching the elastic on. I've still got to cut that piece off. And then I've got this piece here. Uh, this bit's got to be wet formed yet, so I'll stick that to one side and I'll get these bits sorted first. Next thing is to get this wet formed. So my wet form mold here, um, basically a block of wood glued onto the center of this one and then my mold goes, or the form over the top, push it on, that'll fit into that section there. And then I'll put my logo onto this, this sort of like bottom front here. So get this into the sink, so keep it. In some sort of like lukewarm water, just until it's nice and pliable, and then I can put it, clamp it onto the board. There we go, that's the uh, leather in place on the mould. Uh, just need to get that to dry out now. Logo is on there, so I'm gonna stick it in my warming cabinet just to speed the job up a little bit. However, as per usual, here's one I prepared earlier. Now what I need to do now is to go through, like I did with my other pouch in my other video, uh, go around the edges so I can put the, using 
the, the pricking irons to put the stitch holes in and then I can trim it to fit. So I'll sort that out next uh, and then it can all get dyed. So as before, I'm just going to use my pricking iron. Right, I've got the the back piece and the belt loop here. Um, for those that saw me last video where I did the uh, use the Canoba cream and the tan knot just to coat it, there's one extra process I just want to do with these two before I start stitching it all together, and that is these light. Well, these edges are already finished off. Uh, I need to burnish them. So what I'll do is I'll just wet them down first. Just make them damp. So. And you can see already that the edges are starting to shine up. So ones that I haven't done that with, and then the ones that I've already shined. So it just seals, helps seal the edges up when you're burnishing. Knittings them up as well. The reason I'm not doing sort of the bottom half and this bottom edge is when I stick the front on, I might just need to trim them up slightly, give them a bit of a sand down just to even them all up. So I'll have to really redo them again anyway. So that's why it's just the top edge. usually do is just put them on the edge of the table and just just rub my burnishing tool along the edges. There we go, and then I'm just going to put a bit of canoba cream on and some tan knot. So canoba cream first. Again, reason why I do that is because if I put the tan knot on first on the suede side, it might just leak through the holes and then stain on this top side. But at least if I put the canoba cream on first, I don't usually get much of a problem with it.
Right, just got to leave them to dry and then I can stitch the elastic on. Right, see you in a bit. Right, up to a point where I've got all the pieces now are all dyed, burnished where I need them to be. Uh, I've got the front finished off. Uh, that's tan knotted at the back, a uh, bit of clover cream at the front. Uh, that is now ready to get stuck to the front, uh, well, stuck to the back piece. Before I do that though, I've got to stitch on the piece of elastic, almost got it, piece of elastic and also the top part of the belt loop. So I've already got the holes in at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch them in place after I've got that in place. And then when I want to put the front on, I can then fold it over and stitch the bottom part as I stitch the bottom section on. So those will all be stitched together. So first job, elastic, then belt loop, then I can put the front on. Almost forgot something then. Right, just because uh, this one is going to have, or this particular pouch has got, it's got the lid over the top as opposed to my uh, little three bullet pouch that I've made beforehand, uh, I need some way to uh, fasten it down. And what I've used on my last one, or at least on my prototype one, if I can pick it up, is one of these, a little Sam Brown. So I've already marked on a hole of where it needs to go. So I'll get me a hole punch, the mallet, through, threaded section through it, and then what I'll do is I'll just screw with the front piece on secure like that. And then as the leather of the lid folds over, it just pops over that little stud and just holds in place. Typical memory card with all this time. Right, start again. So, just dump these edges off. Don't need too much water on them just to make them damp. Right. Now to give it a bit of a rubbing, vigorously. Thank you. 
liking that. So, leave it to dry and then I can wax it. So there we go, the bullet pouch is all finished off, waxed it, I've buffed it up a little bit just to give it a bit of a shine. Um, I've got some blanks in there, these are 308 cases, um, should fit 243, 22, 250, that sort of size. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll get it outside and I'll give it some closer shots to it. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make up next time, but if you've got any ideas, just give us a shout. And other than that, I'll see you later.